Hi, this is Deborah Smithy, Certified Professional Midwife. My website is MissouriMidwife.com. Blog is more than just a midwife.com. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between a fetoscope and a Doppler. A fetoscope is a modified stethoscope. This is what a fetoscope looks like. It's a modified stethoscope that has one side that goes against the woman's abdomen. The other side goes against the listener's head. With the earpieces in place, the part that goes against the head actually causes little subtle skull vibrations that sort of turn up the volume for the listener. Now on my fetoscope, I've actually attached two sets of earpieces that are both on long pieces of tubing. The reason I do this is that I'd like for the mom to be able to hear at the very same time that I'm listening. Um, before I had the two pieces of tubing, I used to listen with my fetoscope and then switch to a regular stethoscope on the mom's abdomen and then let her try to hear. That works most of the time, but if the baby moves in between the time that I'm listening and the time that she's listening, she might not be hearing anything at all. So with the fetoscope, with two sets of earpieces attached, I know that I can hear the heart rate and I can tap it on her arm to help her try to kind of zero in on what the sound is going to sound like. Now a fetoscope doesn't sound just like a Doppler. So if you're used to listening to your baby's heartbeat with a Doppler, then it's going to be harder for you to hear with the fetoscope. A Doppler is an electronic device. This one's my Doppler. Um, it emits um, electronic waves that are similar to microwaves. A Doppler um, there's been several studies that are wondering about the safety of Dopplers. Some people think that using a Doppler early in pregnancy or using it often during pregnancy can cause damage to the fetus. So um, I think that you know the jury is out on that question and I would rather err on the side of caution. Therefore, I use my fetoscope most of the time. It doesn't emit any sort of Doppler waves of any kind. Um, and therefore, it's probably little or no risk to using a fetoscope versus using a Doppler. So are there times that I would use a Doppler? Absolutely there are. Um, say if it's before 13 weeks, I'm going to really try not to use the Doppler and stick just with the fetoscope. But if we have parents that are very nervous about the pregnancy and talking through the normal signs of pregnancy that we're seeing doesn't reassure them and they really are desperate to hear the heartbeat, if they can't hear it with this, then sometimes I'll pull out my Doppler and use it for a, as brief an amount of time I, as I can. Um, after 13 weeks, if the parents um, consent to me using the Doppler, I might use it if I cannot hear the heartbeat with the fetoscope or if the parents cannot hear the heartbeat with the fetoscope, then I might switch to Doppler. Um, during labor and birth, on the other hand, I almost always switch to using the Doppler and that is because in order for me to listen with the fetoscope, the mom needs to lay flat on her back. Um, it makes it harder to hear the heart rate during labor because the contracting uterus is harder to hear through. So the mom would have to get in the most comfortable position and I still wouldn't hear as well as I want to hear with my fetoscope. So usually during labor with the consent of the parents I switch to the Doppler because it's a lot more quick to get the heart rate and the mom can be in almost any position in a birth pool, out of the birth pool, hands and knees, standing, just about any position, I can quickly and easily get the heartbeat with the Doppler during labor. So that's when I would use a Doppler. Um, when can I hear the baby with the fetoscope? The earliest I've heard has been about 11 weeks. I, um, 12 weeks quite often, a few times in the 11th week. On average, I hear the baby by the 13th week with the fetoscope. Um, Doppler, I don't have the early probe, the early pregnancy probe on my Doppler. So with that, I would say the earliest eight or nine weeks is whenever you could hear it. And, and on average, probably around 12 weeks with the, with the Doppler that I have. Um, what things help us hear the baby better? If the mom's laying flat on her back and the baby is 
face downward with its back facing up, if I can get my fetoscope as close to the baby's back as possible, then we're more likely to hear the baby. If the baby is facing with its arms and legs facing up towards us, then I can't really get the fetoscope against the solid surface of the baby's back, and we're less likely to hear it early. Um, if the placenta, pretend like this is your placenta, I know it's way too big for this baby, but so you got a placenta right on the front of the mom's uterus. Then we have to listen through the, through the uterus, through the placenta, and try to pinpoint where that baby is on the other side. You can tell that's a lot more tissue to be listening through, and we're, more, we're less likely to hear it early if the placenta is right, right in the front. Um, or if the mom has a lot of abdominal fat, abdominal tissue, then it just gives us more tissue to have to listen through and less likely to hear the baby super early. Um, in order to listen with the fetoscope, I always palpate the woman's abdomen. That means I feel the abdomen with my hands. I determine what position I suspect the baby is in. And then I put my fetoscope right where I think the back is. If I hear the heartbeat loud and clear, I'm probably right about my position. Um, if the heartbeat isn't where I suspect, then I'm going to listen everywhere. Um, or if the heartbeat isn't the loudest where I suspect, then I'm going to listen all around, repalpate, and determine am I right about that baby's position or have I made a mistake and the baby's in a different position. Um, let's see. Seems like there was something else I was going to say. Oh, I know. Um, the Doppler, I think, is better at helping to determine the baby's position, helping you to confirm that position, because the Doppler, for me, is more precise. I can tell more where that heartbeat is coming from and how far away is the heartbeat. So I can tell if that baby's heart is just right near the fetoscope or is it farther away. Is it to the right or to the left? It seems like it's a, a lot more useful tool for an experienced midwife who uses the fetoscope all the time. It's probably going to be a lot more accurate using the fetoscope. The Doppler, on the other hand, um, you hear the heartbeat and you know it's in there, but you can't really tell very much how far away is it or, or where is the heartbeat in relation to the Doppler. So that, I hope, hope that's everything I wanted to tell you about the fetoscope versus the Doppler. I am a big proponent of the fetoscope. You don't need any batteries for it. It works all the time, works every time, and you don't have any problems with your electronic devices. Um, however, during labor and birth, I do usually switch to the Doppler um, for the comfort and convenience, comfort of the mother and convenience of the midwife um, to be able to check heart tones in any position anywhere. So anyway, if you have any questions about Fetoscope or questions about the Doppler, you can email me if you want. Check out my website, MissouriMidwife.com, morethanjustamidwife.com, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks!